Well, the situation on the eastern uh, front here in Ukraine has been really tense all over uh, the summer, and we've seen those advances, uh, you know, uh, rapidly uh, continuing, especially in the Toret, Chatyvyar, and Pokrov sector, if you're familiar with the geography in the region of Donetsk. And uh, what has uh, really been worrying the troops uh, on the ground is that those advances, they continue. There's not so much uh, defense lines remaining between the city of Pokrov and the Russian army, they are less than 10 kilometers away from Pokrovsk, which is their next big objective. Why? Because it is a really a logistic hub in the Donetsk region. If they reach Pokrovsk, then it's going to open the road to Kramatorsk, that is uh, on the north of the city. It's also going to open the road uh, up to uh, the region of Dnipro, which is next to uh, Donetsk. So uh, the situation is uh, a tent, is difficult uh, there for the Ukrainian army. And this is also uh, why why uh, President Zelensky had justified the incursion into Kursk Oblast in Russia to try and alleviate a little bit this front in the east. But uh, even if Russia took some reserves to uh, respond to the situation in Kursk, uh, the advances we register in uh, the eastern part of Ukraine show that there's still uh, a very mighty uh, force uh, 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 that is pushing against the uh, Ukrainian army there. Well, Russia has been targeting uh, various uh, regions uh, throughout Ukraine, uh, the capital included. What is life like for residents of Kyiv at the moment? I understand they've just had to endure a nine-hour air raid alert. Absolutely. That was the last, uh, the latest alert uh, we've had overnight. Nine hours during which the air defense here in Kiev was uh, uh, shooting down uh, drones, Russian kamikaze drones that were targeting the capital. And this comes after a string of deadly attacks, not just here in Kiev, but also all across the country. Over the weekend, the city of Kharkiv, the northeastern city of Kharkiv, was hit uh, there, uh, there by uh, drones, by bombs, by glide bombs. I don't know if you can imagine in just a random uh, big city and the Palace of Sports has been completely destroyed, the school has been destroyed, residential uh, infrastructures have been destroyed as well as uh, energy ones and uh, on Tuesday the city of Poltava in central Ukraine which has been hit this time, an institute of communication of the military academy has been hit. There's over uh, 50 people who died and 300 people injured when two missiles uh, struck uh, this, uh, uh, this education facility. And uh, yesterday, we've had also a strike in Western Ukraine, which traditionally is a bit safer than other cities. The city of Lviv has been hit. Seven people died. Uh, over 60 were injured. And among those dead, uh, there's a family which has been decimated. Uh, the dad survived. His wife and three daughters uh, died in the shelling, in the bombing of their houses with a missile. So that's the everyday life here in Ukraine. And what is the humanitarian situation like? How many people have been displaced? There's millions of people who have been displaced, mostly from the eastern region. So often, uh, if you will, people from the east, they don't want to relocate somewhere where they don't know anybody. So often they will relocate very close uh, to their home. I was talking about Pokrovsk a moment ago. Uh, people east of Pokrovsk would have relocated in Pokrovsk. And now that the Donetsk authorities have asked uh, people, residents of Pokrovsk, to also evacuate, you have to keep in mind that those 60,000 inhabitants we had a few weeks ago, among them, there are thousands of people who had already relocated. And now they have to escape again. They have to go west again to safer places. And often we have people who haven't just fled once uh, in front of Russian advances. They have fled twice or even more when they come from occupied territory, looking for safety uh, in places that are, uh, you know, more west than, uh, what, than where they were living. Well, Ukraine says it can stop Russia's wave of deadly strikes with U.S. long-range missiles, but it's not allowed to use them? Absolutely. There's, uh, um, uh, there's this uh, dichotomy on what we... Uh, have when we hear uh, the Western support here. Of course, the West says that it's standing, um, standing uh, by uh, Ukraine and that it will help 
uh, Ukraine for as long as it takes. But Ukraine uh, seems to be fighting uh, with its hands, with one hand uh, tied in the back because it cannot strike uh, in depth within Russian territory. Why is it important? Because all the airfields that uh, Russia uses uh, for its planes carrying those bombs that hit Ukraine, where they are further than the zone in which Ukraine is allowed to strike. So Ukraine needs, uh, of course, to be able to respond and to be able to protect uh, itself, according to Kiev. Uh, and it would like to be able to use long range missiles given by its Western partners to uh, do so. At the moment, it can't. And at the moment, it also doesn't have sufficient air defense to protect all cities. And we've seen also here in Kiev, but also in any other city, when there is enough supplies, well, the sky feel safer. We hear less explosions. There, there are less, uh, less houses damaged, and of course, less victims because ultimately, uh, those bombing, you know, uh, translate themselves in uh, in Ukrainian lives. Uh, and when there is a lack of supply, when things uh, stall a little bit, well, there's more destruction, and as a consequence, more people are dying, more people are injured. Well, President Vladimir Putin says Ukraine's incursion into Russia's Kursk region has failed to slow the Russian advance in Donbass. What is Kyiv saying? Well, uh, Vladimir Putin has to reassure his own uh, people uh, as, uh, with regards to this offensive. However, this offensive is still ongoing. Ukraine still maintains over a hundred, over a thousand, sorry, square meters of uh, territory within Russia, and it intends to use it uh, uh, for. Uh, you know, in the future negotiations, Ukraine says it has uh, no plans to keep this territory indefinitely. Uh, it, and in it intends to use it for exchange against its own territories, which have been illegally occupied by Russia. I'm thinking about occupied Crimea. I'm thinking about uh, Donetsk and Luhansk uh, regions, but also Zaporizhia, Kherson regions, which are also partially uh, occupied. So, so far from Kiev's perspective, this incursion is very much ongoing and still very much serves its purposes to have some leverage with Russia at some point. And just lastly, President Vladimir Zelensky has ordered a major government reshuffle, saying Ukraine needs new energy at this crucial juncture in the war against Russia. Uh, what changes have been made and uh, what difference will they make? So first off, we've had a, a wave of letters of um, resignation from uh, key ministries. We have uh, Dmitry Kuleba, the foreign affairs minister. We have the vice, uh, the deputy uh, prime minister, Olga Stefanishina, who's also the minister for European in and transatlantic integration. The minister of justice as well have offered their resignations. Kuleba's resignation, so the foreign affairs minister, has not been accepted so far by the parliament. It's a whole process. But but we're likely to see those political figures further, but in other roles. It's not as if those uh, politicians will leave the political scene, will not have any role to play in the future. But indeed, it is a reshuffle and it had been announced already. It was on the cards for months already. What's interesting, though, is that Kuleba had been asked about uh, whether or not he would quit the government at some point. And uh, his answer last year was that he would only do so uh, on uh, request, upon presidential request, or if he no longer agreed with the government's uh, policies. And uh, uh, we can see there that it's, it's probably a reshuffle that was uh, that was wanted by the government. We will see uh, who gets which uh, jobs in the next government, but we're likely to see those figures again. Emmanuel Chase, good to get your views from Kiev. Thank you so much.